again. Okay, so I made a video yesterday that was encouraging and I think Yahweh must have known I needed it because uh, like I posted about that commercial last night and then something came up this morning that really just, again, uh, I had to like clutch my heart in in disbelief of like what is going on in these times. So, um, I've mentioned in previous videos I haven't been going to church lately for various reasons and I don't have anything against anyone, I don't judge anyone, I, I pray about everything, um, not just since things have unraveled but just in every way. I'm always learning. The Holy Spirit's always moving in what we need to do, so we need to listen. Um, test the spirits, of course, is in the New Testament. So today, um, I got on my church's um, live stream for um, uh, the service, and I, o I don't always do that, but I was like, okay, Lord, you know what? I what do you want to show me? Uh, maybe, you know, the sermon's going to be great today. Um, I'm just going to just see what happens. So my pastor got up, and he wasn't doing the preaching. He was just um, reading the scripture that was going to be preached about and um, kind of welcoming the, everybody. So he... Um, he started by saying, oh, and I just thought about how in Leviticus, now I'm not going to get his wording right, I'm not quoting him, but he said something to this effect. I noticed in Leviticus that, uh, let me try to think what he, so I don't get it wrong, that um, God had told the Israelites in the camp that if someone had a disease, they had to essentially be quarantined um, until they were healed, and then they had to cover their face. And he said, isn't it amazing and so cool? Now, this is just my own personal thing. I hate it. I don't hate it. It, it annoys me when people use the word cool for things in the Bible. I, I think it's just trite. It makes the Bible trite. It makes, and I love this pastor. I really do. Um, I'm not speaking against him. It just disturbs my soul and annoys me when people do this. Um, anyway, so he said, isn't it cool uh, the way even 5,000 years before all this happened today, the Bible was talking about it? I was like, uh, what? What? So essentially, the pastor was saying it's a good thing to wear face coverings and that the Bible addressed this kind of thing 5,000 years ago? Okay, so I went to Leviticus and I said, what passage was he talking about? Now I knew it was, I knew where it was. I knew basically what he was talking about, but I wanted to read it. So I quickly skimmed it before I um, started this video. Um, and it's in Leviticus um, 13. Well, it's in the Le Leviticus 13. Look at that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, about skin diseases. I'm not going to read this. It basically just talks about the priest. If someone's found to have a skin disease, which was probably leprosy, maybe it was something else. Because, you know, like I always say, we don't really know what time this was. The timeline's off. Whatever, whatever. But for all intents and purposes, we'll just say leprosy, skin disease. It describes leprosy, like, and it describes what the skin looks like and scabbing and oozing and pinkness and redness, and I'm not going to go into it, but it really does say that in the Bible. Um, 
But I will read the part that my pastor was referring to in his comparison with nowadays. Um, uh, verse, so it was all about the priest declaring this person clean or unclean, okay? Um, so the priest continues to examine this person every seven days to see how the infection is spreading or not spreading, just to put it nicely. Um, verse four, if the irritated area is white, does not look deeper than the rest of the skin and the hair has not turned white, the priest must put him in isolation for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest will examine him again. Um, if the disease looks the same and has not spread, the priest must put him in isolation for another seven days. And on the seventh day, the priest will examine him again. Um, so, anyways, you get the point. Um, and so this is the part that we in the Truther community, community kind of tease about, the, the unclean, unclean, you know, that's how we're treated. So in verse 45, um, which is the last verse, or I'm sorry, verse 46 is the last verse. People who come down with a skin disease must wear torn clothes and leave their hair uncombed. They must cover their upper lips and call out, unclean, unclean. As long as they have the skin disease, they are unclean. They must live outside the camp. <sighs> okay. This isn't going to be a long video. Okay. Like I said, I'm not bitter. I'm not mad. I'm more annoyed. I'm disheartened, but I'm not like broken hearted. Maybe I should be. I'm more like, what is going on? Like, <sighs> my pastor's smart too. Christians can be smart. Like, just think it's funny actually how could he take that out of context like that so blatantly like was he kidding I hope so even if he was kidding I don't think he should be kidding from the stage like this is my whole point why aren't we as followers of Yeshua waking up and speaking up like from the pulpit and the other thing is, why do we always have to mention what's going on? And if you mention what's going on, tell the truth about it. Like, why even say stuff like that? It's like, what? I, I, I don't even know what to say about it. Like, to say that the Bible is saying that the same thing that's happening now was appointed by God and then his priesthood to take care of in Israel's camp. What is the comparison? There is no comparison. There's no comparison. I am at this point even speechless at how stupid people have become. And just pray. Um, to be gracious to people still, I think that's important, especially um, fellow Christians. Uh, but wow, um, I, I honestly, and this is my heart, I told my husband today, I am done. Uh, I can't take this um, this weirdness anymore, this lack of understanding. And I'm not saying I'm smarter and I can tell them a thing or two. I'm not saying that. I can't 
it's almost two-faced because I know this man of God doesn't think things are as bad. But then you put stuff like that and say that it's almost God-appointed what's going on right now and how they're handling it. Whatever it is. Like, this is just silliness. It's silliness. And I just don't want to be... It's not, like I said, I don't disrespect the man. I'm not going to be a part of the silliness. I, I don't want to... And I like fun. I like having fun. And I'm not a stick in the mud all the time. <laughs> Sometimes I am. And a lot of people think I'm some... Um, just, you know, quiet... Um you know, no-nonsense person, but I'm really not. It's just, I don't know. Has anybody experienced this? I really feel like I'm not even going to talk to this pastor. I, like, I, I'm just done. Like, this is it. This, what in the world's going on? Don't be foolish. Don't be silly. I mean, give me a break. Um, yeah. I just wanted to share. It's too comical now. Like, it's getting comical. Uh, like I said, even if he was joking, really, taking scripture out of context is not something that's really a joke to me. And it's not cool. Not cool, man. Not cool.